Ladies and gentlemen, what is up and welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to be continuing the top five series looking at the tech class today. And the tech class is probably my least favorite class in Marvel Contest of Champions. Just because of two reasons, like half the characters are Iron Man. And the second one is like new characters, like they never get added to the tech class. Like tech is the most neglected class out of the entire game. Throughout my uh, entire time playing, which has been about 13, 13 months now, only two new tech characters have been added. That's been Howard the Duck and Civil Warrior. And those characters have both been very, very mediocre. But tech does have, it does have some really, really strong characters in it. Uh, but yes, for the most part, it's very hit and miss. It's quite neglected in terms of like new characters that are being added. But maybe with Guardians of the Galaxy, we might see like one or maybe two of the new characters fall into tech. But I think it's likely that all three of them are going to be cosmic so we're gonna have to we're gonna have to wait and see for that but there are still some like relatively fun characters in the tech class to play but it's just a little bit of a neglected tech uh, class out in comparison and especially when you come to like the five star basic crystal the you know four tech characters available are star lord iron patriot iron man and hulkbuster and you don't really want any of them apart from star lord which you really really want him because he's he's the best by quite a considerable margin when it comes to uh, those basic characters available in the five star hero crystal but anyway enough rambling let's get on to the top five tech characters so again not much has really changed with this class since i did my last video the only difference is how the duck has been added but quite a bit has changed to how the characters work and scale with the new patch so let's all start off by talking about champion number five ladies and gentlemen who do i believe i think champion number five is very very close between two characters for me and that is civil warrior and how the duck but i'm gonna have to go with civil warrior just because how the duck when you're playing how the duck he has the most atrocious sound and all of his stuff is is very very random based uh like a lot of his procs and his regeneration it's all based on randomness so that that kind of really irks me about the character and it's not like uh, it's it's not like really really big payout randomness like Scarlet Witch like when you get a lucky proc on her You've got like this huge regeneration or huge damage buff It's like you've got a chance to get a little bit of regeneration or like a, a tiny bit of damage on the enemy So yeah, not really a fan of how the duck so number five for me is gonna have to be civil warrior So what can civil warrior do that is pretty awesome. So above all uh, other characters he's got quite a, a nice increase on his ba base block proficiency unfortunately it's still nowhere near captain america or quake but it's above like all of the other characters so he takes maybe like a few less damage on every single parry uh he's got a power drain on his level two which is very very valuable it's about 60 percent power drain not quite the 100 percent vision has um special attacks by using a heavy attack you have a 100 percent chance to inflict heal block and they've actually made it uh significantly easier a couple of months ago to chain it on with a special attack so if you use a heavy attack and then a special attack you will replace that three second heal block with a 10 second one so there are certain ways that you can play this champion if you're pretty good pretty aggressive to have heal block on the uh the opponent pretty much 100 percent of the time so that's pretty good apart from that when he has art for each stack of armor up um it reduces the enemy offensive ability accuracy by 15% per armor up charge so that stuff that would proc on the opponent when they're hitting you so it really isn't much of a uh, is, is a much help when you're actually playing the champion makes him quite annoying to fight though especially if you're playing with a bleed champion and he keeps on using his special one because uh, you're gonna have a very very low percentage chance to block your bleed proc your bleed uh, when he is a minus 60% ability accuracy debuff in theory so yeah pretty pretty decent there um and yeah apart from that doesn't really have too much else he has a power lock as well on a special attack free uh, so that is a potential use for the character as well if there's any sort of f fight that's going to give like an absurd power flood you can potentially use the special free to heal uh, power block there but yeah apart from that civil warrior is some all right stuff but nothing that makes the character super super amazing but tech isn't a really super super amazing class anyway at number four we have a character who got hit quite a bit by the most recent update and that is rocket raccoon so kind of the biggest change to rocket raccoon with patch 12.0 
is that before, uh, his kind of signature and awakened ability used to be a percentage-based uh, crit increase chance on every single 10 combo. So basically, like, after 20 combo hits, you'd have pretty much a 100% chance for every one of your hits to be a critical hit. But now you get a, a huge amount of increased crit rating. However, this is nowhere near as effective as the, the crit percentage was. Even with a combo of, like, 50 or 60, I'm still not seeing 100% crit chance. So yeah, it's, it's, he's still really, really good. Still a lot of crits when you're playing Rocket Raccoon, but it's not that guaranteed crit that you had before the patch. So that, that upsets me a little bit, but overall kind of to give you the flatline on Rocket Raccoon, if you are not familiar with this character, Great prestige, amazing damage output, but very, very flimsy champion. One of the benefits that Rocket Raccoon did get with the update is the change to block proficiency, means that he parries now for significantly uh, less damage, and also the opponent can't crit him on a parry, which is definitely one of Rocket Raccoon's weaker points, you know, being a huge glass cannon champion. So he reliably takes less damage on parries. So kind of that may have up the value of him a little bit in terms of his survivability. And in terms of his crit, he has taken a little, little bit of a hit there. But with Rocket Raccoon, the special attack too is just so good. It's still so much fun to uh, fire off and has a really, really good uh, synergy with deep wounds there. But that's pretty much it for Rocket Raccoon. Uh, he has, uh, what is he? He has this... Um, additional like armor up charges and physical resistance by dashing back and holding block but i don't think there's ever a scenario where you actually uh can gain a huge amount of effectiveness from using it but i guess it's interesting to bear in mind again this stuff doesn't really matter if you're playing rocket raccoon the right way and not getting hit but rocket raccoon isn't a very good character if you can't play to a near level of perfection but if you can he's pretty awesome pretty decent character so i really really like rocket uh, so he comes in at my number four there. So for number three, we have Vision. I'm, I'm going to say both of the Visions are categorized in this initially. Like, when I was talking about Vision a few months ago, um, I always was of the opinion, opinion that Vision Age of Ultron was significantly better than the classic Vision, but... Uh, from talking, uh, kind of making some friendships in some of the top alliances, I've seen that like the uh, the classic version of Vision, if you are in like that top one percent, if you've got the four five out of five tech mastery, uh, which negates power gain. He can be a lot, lot more valuable in certain circumstances where you're playing quite slow, and there are ways that you can play that vision um, just by waiting for, you know, his power to come up to allow the opponent never to get to their special one. Again, it's a very, very patient way of playing, but I've now seen that there's a way to play that character that I was, n was not really aware about or not really had any intention to explore. So that's uh, something a bit interesting about classic vision there, but vision overall, uh, they're fairly similar. The only difference between the two really is how they gain power so vision age of ultron gains power whenever he uses a special attack and the other one just gains power at kind of intervals i think it's like every uh 10 15 seconds or so so yeah that's that's the kind of only difference between the two and the classic version has a little bit higher prestige um also one of the huge uh well it's not a huge increase but a decent increase with the patch is that vision's power drain damage has gone up by roughly roughly double so it's dealing quite a bit more than it used to from what i can see uh converting damage to power burn so it looks like he's got a fairly solid damage increase with the patch there but again the, the kind of uh, play style with vision it's just you get to the special two, you slap that down, 100% power burn, total denial of the enemy power, and it's pretty good. And then the passive on Vision, of course, is he's fully immune to poison and bleed. So this is why overall I think Vision, in my opinion, is better than Civil Warrior to actually play. Because the uh, the kind of pros to Vision when playing is you have 100% power drain on your special two instead of 60%, and you have full poison and bleed immunity. So yeah, I think Vision, in my opinion, he's a better character than Civil Warrior, but Again, that's just kind of my thoughts and opinions there. Very, very simple character. Plus as well with Vision, you know, when you slap down the special 200% drain power, you get you get a special one back again, and then it just takes a 10-15 com combo to get to the special two again. So really, really good for power denial. Now, next up, we have Ultron at the number two spot. I really, I still love playing Ultron. Very, very fun character to play. Kind of one of the, uh, the biggest difference, uh, differences, again, with the patch is um, the way that 
uh, his regeneration works, so it only scales off base health now instead of modified health, so it means he's a little bit less valuable as a defender, but the fact that he has that random, like, a chance to evade that, you know, has a 7 second cooldown still makes him, like, potentially, like, quite annoying in Alliance War Defense, because there are going to be those opportunities where he randomly evades and then hits the opponent back and absolutely wrecks them. So that's a, a big pro about Ultron. Apart from that, he has energy absorption, so um, whenever he's attacked by an energy attack, he converts 60% of that. I think it goes up to 65% at max level, or 63%, uh, but he converts that into both power and health, so that's really, really good against opponents like Doctor Strange and Magneto, and any, any enemies that have a lot of energy damage. Um, also has that regen again at 50 and 25% health. Uh, fully fully bleed and poison immune a lot of this stuff just makes him really really good for like map 5 and map 6 and just alliance questing in general especially when it comes to those later maps though has a chance to stun on his special attacks as well and has a uh, a pretty nice bleed which will uh, deal increased damage which when you use a special attack deals significantly increased damage and removes every stack of bleed has quite a nice synergy there with deep wounds and is significantly less punishing with the change to willpower not being as predominant as it was before so overall Ultron's still a really really solid character to play nothing has really changed in regard to that um, but now he's a little bit less valuable in terms of his regeneration as a defender so might not make for the best alliance war boss uh, but you know he's kind of going out of style for alliance war bosses anyway and then finally ladies and gentlemen we have the number one character which is Star Lord of course such an insanely powerful character uh, by far the the, by far the top champion in the tech class by such a large margin. So again, if you're not familiar with Star-Lord, what makes him so powerful um, is that with every combo, so they've actually changed, it's always worked this way, but they've actually changed the ability description. So it used to be with every 10 hits, your damage goes up by a certain percent, but it will work off every hit. So now it's every hit you get, your attack goes up by a certain, uh, a certain milestone, which again, it works exactly the same way. It's just worded a little bit differently. So every single combo hit you get on Star-Lord, his attack increases and increases. So yeah, then this stat goes up to a maximum of 400 hits. So it makes him just an insane champion for so many fights. Still by far the best option as a 5-star character for doing the Labyrinth of Legends. Really, really good. Really, really simple champion. Has a uh, chance of fury on his basic attacks. Um, also, special attack 2 triggers one of uh, four random element guns. So you have an armor reduction. You have energy damage. You have the potential for a 50% power drain. And also the potential for a, a 11 second heal block. But it's not really about the utility with Star Lord. It's all about that crazy, crazy damage, providing that you can play the game well and you can keep that high combo going. So apart from that, that's pretty much it for the tech class. So again, if I had to have a number six, it would probably be How the Duck. I think War Machine as well. Um, War Machine, I've seen some interesting uses for people that have like way too many tech catalysts. Uh, for War Machine on two nodes in Lions War, Unblockable Special One and Kinetic Reactor. I think Agent Venom is slightly better on both nodes, but he is an option if you are like bursting to the brim with tech catalyst and really want to take up another character for Alliance War Defense. I don't think War Machine is a bad character in that scenario, but apart from that, I don't think he has uh, many uses. Although, his level 1, I guess, synergizes quite well with Deep Wounds, because you get a lot of stacks or bleed from that, so maybe not super bad. Uh, Iron Man, his regeneration could potentially be very useful in some circumstances where you're deep dipping below, uh, you know, 15% health, um, particularly like in this month's monthly event quest, like if you have a 4-star Iron Man, he can be a... Um, potential option for, de for de defeating Iceman. So yeah, that's a that's a potential synergy there. Iron Patriot is just still, in my opinion, a worse version of Iron Man, although his regen and arc overload now triggers at 15% instead of 10%. So he's got that going for him now, but he still gets fully burnt out after that, which means it removes all of his armor, all of his chance to stun, armor break, and his damage output is still incredibly bad. Uh, then finally, what, what do we have? The last champion in the, uh, the 
tech class this Hulkbuster. Hulkbuster, he is just a complete bin champion now, in my opinion. What make Hulk, what made Hulkbuster so good was just his crazy synergy with Whirl Power. So any debuff uh, would just heal him for so much because he had so much health, and also uh, the fact when you get him lower, he takes significantly less damage. Just any debuff would jack him up so so much in Alliance War, even when people were stunning him. So I thought Hulkbuster was really you know really really tanky champion for that. But now that Will Power has been completely gutted and only scales off base health instead of modified health, I think Hulkbuster's a little bit trash now. I don't see a, um, a reason to take this character ever be past rank 3. However, yeah, that, that's pretty much it for Hulkbuster, just because the special one is so, so easy to continually bait. Special 2, you know, it's, you, you can't fully evade the special 2, but as long as you're continually baiting the special 1, you don't, you don't even need to worry about that. So I think Hulkbuster is a bit trash, he's in the bin, but I think he might have the highest prestige for a basic tech 5-star character. So that might be, I don't know if that's a bright side for the character, but you know, th there you go, guys. I think Hulkbuster, he needs a little bit of a rework for the pack in my opinion i really really like to see uh, some solid changes to kind of rework how hulkbuster works because I, I don't really see like any reason to play him or use him at the moment but i'm very interested ladies and gentlemen to get your thoughts do you agree with this list do you think certain characters rank slightly differently let me know in the comments below apart from that thank you for watching the video hope you enjoyed it if you did feel free to leave a like that'd be greatly appreciated take care and have an absolutely fantastic day